public notice. Notice is hereby given that under Mass General Law, Chapter 40A, Section 5 of the Reading Community Planning and Development Commission, oh, not how, <laughs> that's weird. The community, uh, the Reading Community Planning and Development Commission will hold a public hearing on Monday, January 22nd, 2018 at 7.30 p.m. in the Selectman's Meeting Room in Reading Town Hall, 16 Lowell Street, to consider the following proposed zoning bylaw amendments in advance of April 2018 annual town meeting. Under section 6.0, intensity regulations, amendments to the language and formatting of subsection 6.2, 6.3, 6.4, and 6.5, including specific amendments to the bulk, dimensional, and buffer requirements within the industrial zoning districts. Complete drafts of the proposed amendments are available to the public in the Public Services <coughs> Office in Town Hall, Monday to Thursday, 7.30 a.m. to 5.30 p.m., and Tuesday, 7.30 a.m. to 7 p.m and on the town's website um, on the Community Planning and Development Commission page. Anything from staff? Um, <coughs> I think this is the same as, more or less the same as you discussed last time with maybe a couple modifications. I honestly don't remember how many changes I made since the last meeting. Tony, how many changes did you make? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I only got about <clears throat> two-thirds of the way through. There were a couple suggestions that you guys had last time. Um, but it was like, I don't think it was anything. Oh, there was, okay, I do remember now. We I left the, um, I modified the industrial district hotel motel shadow um, section, which is 6.2.2. 3.1 it's on the screen um, we did because we did talk about that um, but we didn't I made it less specific Page five of the draft, six four one two in three and four and so forth. Um, we, there's a lot of repetitive language. I mean, the the phrase the in an industrial district as part of new construction, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, there um, is repeated three or four times, and there's should be some editorial way of um, stating that once and then having the, the, other, the conditions as subsets, as subtitles. We've got 6412, the, the new number, is the buffer strip. 6413 is the setback. In 6414 uh, is, I guess, the business C constraint. It's a, a minor consideration, but it's the redundancy was. You mean the redundancy of like the opening paragraph? <coughs> yes. <clears throat> one is on the buffer strip, and the other one's on the building massing. So it's sentence to that. It's repeated. Changes right at the end, right? Mm -hmm. Right. Exactly. It's the same until you get to residence district. Yeah. Well, actually, in 6412, we have shares a lot line with or is across the street from, which is not in the, um, in 64413. It just says shares a lot line with. 
does that same phrase apply to 6411? Could it be that? Six four one one is the table. What does that yellow? Where is that yellow highlighted sentence supposed to go? Oh, that's it. that was just a note about why I took this out. I should have made it like a comment on the side. Oh. Um, I see table. It's just been in there since the beginning, and I didn't move it. But I just was saying like where the lot line is a street line, then they defer to the table. Um, except for this one instance right here, which we added in last time in 6412. We added or is across the street from, maybe it wasn't last time, maybe it's the time before when we spoke about this. It's not that offensive. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, there's an extra word, I think, in the new 64132. It says, on a lot that is shares a lot line. Get rid of is. So is is gone? Oh, yeah, yeah. okay. <clears throat> So, um, understanding where some of this, how the street um, piece got in there, but the way that it's written, I, I think, in terms of this landscaping buffer, if the, if the industrial property is across the, the um, not a side street, but the front street, then what we're saying is that um, you need to put a, um, you need to create a buffer in the front of that property. I think it could apply to any street. R no, it can apply to yeah. any street. Okay. But in the case where, um, where it's, it's um, the front of a building, what you're saying, what we're saying here is you need, if you have an, if you have any development in, in an industrial district, mm -hmm. you need to buffer that from the road. Right. I think if it's across the street from a residential. I think properties. I was thinking of like Ash Street, where like RMLD is directly across from those homes. You know. Right. So let's right. take uh, let's mm -hmm. take RMLD. Mm -hmm. um, okay. What we're saying is we need to put up a um, any if they do anything with RMLD. Um, they need to put up a six foot high fence and in the front of our MLD along Ash Street and include the uh, a vegetated buffer. I don't think that's really what we want. Do, I may be reading this wrong, but I think that, that that's the sort of that's that because we put that street phrase yeah. in here, then right. Well, it's, the street phase might work, it's just that it's not. The industrial district is the industrial use, right? Because the RMLD is really an office, right? Uh, the whole front of the house there is an office, so that's not usually an offensive. By, <coughs> by offensive, I don't mean that the use is actually offensive. It's just that it doesn't. It, it's it nothing about the residential it's yeah. district. Yeah. Is <coughs> intrusive. Yeah, it's sort of intruding on the residential district, and so we want to make sure we protect it while allowing that industrial use to. <coughs> good use of his property. That's a good point that you bring up though, John. That's probably not exactly what we would want in that condition. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> is there, let me just read this. A, a side note to this same paragraph, different issue. The way that I read this is that um, said buffer strip shall have a um, 12, it shall be 12 feet deep um, with a curb. 
a six foot high fence and then shrubs evergreen hedge on the industrial side of the fen fence that's at least three feet high that that doesn't make sense to me because that's on the yeah. inside of the right. fence so no one would even see it so and right. it's going to grow to seven feet. and it's going to grow to seven feet so it's got to be yeah stick it I, i'm not sure I, I think we've got that wrong yeah <laughs> Well, so what that what's weird about that is that the street piece aside, that was the way that this language was, which means uh, it's a weird buffer one way or the other. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. Right. Yes. So the, this is industrial district or the PUDI, which is limited applicability. Right, and that's why I brought it up. Is it's just a, we well, should be able to think through those what those conditions are. Yeah, but specifically, it, it would not apply to something like um, Eric's greenhouse. Greenhouse, where we redeveloped it with a different use, but it's but it's still a residential district. Right. This is just industrial district, not industrial use. Right. Is the industrial district of anything that's allowed. <clears throat> By right, in the industrial district. Yeah. Hmm. I wonder what specific thing people had in mind with the, when this was originally written. And, and then on top of that, said buffer strip constructed along the full length, except for curb cuts, which doesn't work either because that means you're going to have a six foot high fence. <laughs> You'll have no sight only, line. Yeah, only two right. feet, and then you have no sight right, line. Right, right, right. That doesn't work. Right. Um, I have forgotten where this change originated. Um, the across the street from change? No, the, the, the intensity regulation change. I mean, it, basically the, the boundary constraints on the industrial di district were... I've forgotten why we started to consider this. Because we realized that potentially our setback requirements were limiting our ability for new growth or expanded growth in the industrial district. Um, and was maybe working counter towards like other bigger picture things we're trying to achieve. Mm. Um, and rather than just changing like height and setbacks. It was suggested that we look at the whole thing. So. So maybe <coughs> we need to rethink this buffer. Yeah. I mean, I, I personally I think the buffer I think that it's the right thing, though I think it may be forcing some buffer requirements in conditions like like Nick said, any use within that industrial district, you have this 12 feet wide, um, 12 foot wide <coughs> buffer, and certainly the way that it's described isn't right either, yeah. and with the fence and the shrubs on the inside up to any curb cut that's just it's um well I, I wonder if the a better way of handling it would be to um, use this section to d just define if you will transitional areas and put in something that would come up in site plan review uh, rather than uh, Try and craft it into the the site, the, the design the guidelines. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So are you saying like be a little more vague to allow for flexibility? <coughs> that just say that a buffer a buffer shall be required as required by the CPDC or at the discretion of the CPDC. Yeah, basically. So the buffer is required, and we see what the use is. We see what the actual conditions mm -hmm. are. 
what's across the street, how much space is there, what would be the best buffer? I mean, guarantee, find a way to, to uh, guarantee that uh, new construction, parking lot, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, in a transitional area is subject to a uh, board review and may require, you know, bullet list of, of things. Upper strip is required. We'll have minimum depth. Some uh, visual screening. Yes, that, thank you. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's what we want to accomplish. The whether we can craft specific uh, constraints here is less clear. Right, that's what I'm saying. So yeah. say those three, those components have to be part of it. It has to have minimum depth yeah. and a visual screen. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it has to be a buffer, it has to have a minimum depth, and it has to have a visual screen. Those are the requirements as opposed to all of these. Specific. Visual screen, which may include landscaping, yes. fencing, or other I don't know, structures right. appropriate by the CP. So yeah, so if you look down to section 6.5, there's actually landscape, a whole section about landscape standards. <laughs> Don't we have landscaping doesn't necessarily mean buffers though, mm -hmm. right? Did, <clears throat> didn't we have some? Did we have um, uh, buffer performance standards per se for? Um, Let's see. Yeah, <coughs> yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. So which, we had a very specific set of criteria there. We wanted which are certain. Buffer size, right? Yeah, they're, they're here. 6414 is the existing. That's business C. Yeah, right. Which maybe would be applicable. I'm not business sure. Business C, but it's, it's specifically up, you know, uh, yeah. running, running whatever that is. Woods? Woods, yeah. So we knew the exact conditions that were right there. Right. Uh, I think part of this might have been in the original business C as well, that buffer distance. Yeah. And then we added some language about landscaping, and if you remember, half the landscaping failed, right? Because it right. couldn't survive in the conditions that were there. So they ended up putting a fence up, I think, along the uh, Curtis Street side. Not half of the landscaping, but some of the landscaping. <laughs> no, yeah. At least since I, in my memory. Uh, so a half of the buffer landscaping <laughs> <laughs> Since, you know, well, whatever. Um, the section right, of, right between those two, 6413, was a section that I've always been wanting you guys to give me some feedback on. So, um, one, one little bit of feedback on that is that I think the way that it's written is that, well, I'm not sure, but <laughs> it seems to me that buildings, I, I, I questioned whether this applied to buildings within, if, 
if only a little part of the building is within 150 feet, does that mean that you are then, does that apply to stepping back <clears throat> on all sides in all conditions because of that, you know, that one, that one corner that might be within 150 feet. We're going to put pyramids. I, right, right, right. And I don't think that's what we want. I think the, the purpose there is stepping back. Right. Stepping back, first of all, on the side that's, that, yeah. that's adjacent. Right, right. Um, and, and I guess I would put it out there until it's at least 150 feet away from the residential district or I don't know. Um. Okay, just remember that an industrial building might have a 25 foot first floor. Yeah. Right. You would typically do some sort of um, envelope setback, right? I mean, that's what you would probably use to in the city. So, building envelopes. Yeah. Right. So the 150 feet is no longer, John. It's now 50. I just want to, I wasn't, unless well, I'm missing No, I, yes. Okay. I know, I, okay. I, and I guess that's really sort of the other thing that drove my thinking on that is that, <clears throat> is that it's more likely that a building will be within that 50 feet. Right. Um, and when and where and how, what are we trying to achieve with that step back, if, I, if yeah. anything. I mean, I, I just, but, um, and I well, definitely leave it up to you guys to, to get a, a better sense of that. What I just noticed was mm -hmm. there's yeah. sort of this, it, it, it wasn't fitting right. Right, no, that's, as I, intended. I think that section was added because we reduced the setback, but yeah, it's definitely not written um, as well as it should be. Do you generally think that stepping the building back is a good, to reduce the massing is a good strategy, or do you think there's another way we should look at this? I think, I think Nick has the right point, though. I mean, if you think about an industrial use, it could be four stories worth of the first story, basically. And so... How do we define story? Yeah, so that might not be a good <coughs> definition to use. So right. I'm mean, picturing just a big box right. store right. and that's yeah. one floor. <laughs> right. And special industrial uses. The building code exempts you from the height and area requirements. So if somebody wanted to build a steel mill, for example, you know, they're not limited by what the building code says. You typically build a steel building out of because you need these giant spans to get Big equipment in that. So that first story could be pretty tall. I don't think but there's a limit on how tall the story is. Yeah. Our table. But the well, we've had height limits. We've got limits on how tall the building can be. Right. But it could yeah. just be one story. It could be right. 45, a 45 foot high warehouse. Yeah. Right, and then there would be no step back required based on the way this is written. Right. So you need to have yeah. some, some line like we do for the design guidelines for downtown, right? For some angle they have to meet or literally carve out some envelope that we want. But then you have to, have to look at every single instance, I think, and start understanding what that means. Mm -hmm. We don't have you know, 20 blocks of the same the same fabric where you could just say, okay, this whole block, mm -hmm. all these 20 blocks are going to look like this. Well, so one question I have is if you have a setback of 50 feet, um, Do you feel that that's not enough of a setback to allow for a shear? <coughs> or do you think that like having a shear 60 foot tall building after a 50 foot setback <coughs> might be okay? Well, 50 feet is the front yard, right? Um, 50 feet is side, rear. So for industrial <coughs> districts that are sharing a lot line with their residents, a residence district. <coughs> okay. Um, right, right. So it's 50 on the side, 50 on the rear, 50 feet. 
And then maybe we need to look at front because and just verify that that front would never happen. I guess it probably wouldn't, would it? Well, the front gets a 50 foot, the, the front gets a setback plus the street. Well, if you're looking at the table where it's sharing a lot line, if you look at table 6411. <coughs> okay, sharing a lot line presumes that there is no street. There, there is no, right. Mm -hmm. In between the properties. And usually we define front by where the street is. So I think that's why it says NA there. And I, I guess I get, I, I'm, I like the, the, that visual line just like we did, you know, just like we used um, uh, downtown. Because really, I think what we're getting at here is what we don't want is, um, you know, that same imposing building, some imposing mass moving ever, you know, even more closer to a residential, um, a, a residential property. But if someone can keep that same, you know, use their property a little bit more and, and not have that, mm -hmm. all that massing come forward, um, then that seems to work well. And I think that that line is mm -hmm. that, um, is that way to do it. Do you like the line of the downtown smart growth district? The two to one, I think it is. It's pretty steep. It's meant for shallow spaces, right? Right. <clears throat> well, this is only in the one occurrence where they're near or adjoining a residential area. Would it make more sense in that case to say something to the effect of anything over X number of feet, you must be X number of feet away from the, the property line? So if you've got a 40-foot building, it's mm -hmm. got to be 80 feet from the property line? Mm -hmm. Because once you get from residential, who cares what you're doing? At that point, it's all industrial. So you're saying X feet for every foot of height? Yeah. That makes sense. So if you want to make the big block, mm -hmm. you just have to be further away. Right. Yeah. As opposed to trying to make the setbacks when it might not work with the stories. Right. Yeah. Think that makes sense. Mm -hmm. It's basically the same thing as the diagonal. Right? Yeah, it is. Yeah. 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 Right. Some, <coughs> some math to be had there. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's simpler math. <laughs> So right now, you could be um, in an industrial district. You could be 60 feet tall, 100 feet away. <coughs> right? You could be 60 feet tall and 50 feet away. No, not right changes. now. Oh, oh, right now, you mean right. before yeah, the changes? Yeah, yeah. Right, yeah. right, yeah. So I guess to me, you know, that's sort of the, that's the, that's the most imposing, that's, um, right, I guess we're trying to be more flexible, right? I guess that's my thought is that we're trying to be more flexible. Um, and right now, we're allowing people, um, uh, Building that's 60 feet tall, 100 feet away from the um, from the lot line. But I think where we're at is, you know, maybe you should be allowed to fill in that triangle, um, but not not the 60 feet, um, not encroach any further. <coughs> Yeah. So if you want to do the step backs underneath that, as long as it doesn't, yeah, okay. 
50 30 feet at 50 right as long as yeah yeah that angle is maintained and is empty so i think the angle is so you could uh, right i think this is the right math you could be 50 feet away but only 30 feet high So we have a limit. We just need to craft the word so that you can get it as close yeah. as 50 feet. <clears throat> and it's really not changing the uh, massing that any residential property would feel right now. It's not increasing how, it's not, how big and close it gets to yeah. a residential thing is now. Oh, I see. No closer. No, no more massive. Like the ratio is the same. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. Are we creating a problem for ourselves? <coughs> no. Um, in the sense that the, the PODI, the Jordans, is way the hell above, higher than anything residential anywhere near it. Because of the uh, topography, and uh, across Walker's Brook Drive, we've got the Reading Medical Center and the area, uh, industrial area behind the existing RMLD, uh, which, as far as I know, does not border residence districts. This is transitional areas. <coughs> this is transitional areas in business A, B, and let's see, located within 150 feet of a residence district and two buildings in business C. So why doesn't the PUD? Uh, it's not the, it doesn't say the PUDI here. Gets its own sort of consideration. Right. Okay. This really has very limited applicability. Just industrial. Just industrial, where it butts up to um, residential. And where is that, per chance? I can show you. Walton <laughs> Street, Lakeview Ave, and Ash Street. And Ash is kind of weird because. The houses are actually above right, everything. The topography yeah. works differently, right? Way above. Those are the apartments on Lake View Ave. The ones that are going to come up in front of us pretty soon? No. no. The ones that are coming up are going to be down here. Right. Where you see the little buildings. Understood. Okay, yeah. I really hate this. <laughs> like a, it's like a. Just turn on the, um, um, the, the photo. Okay, I just wanted to show, like, where the zoning, where the, um, what was the question you asked, Dave? <coughs> where, 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 where does it apply? Where does this really apply? Oh. Yeah. Where, I mean, so the, on the areas that are not PUDI or, or not otherwise zoned. Sorry, area. I'm aerial. So yeah, the brown is is industrial. Yeah, that's uh, it's, it's overlain with PUDI, but it's industrial. <laughs> so, like, this is the area I was thinking about. And there is some industrial up here abutting. Um, where am I? Yep. This is all residential here. <coughs> it's just separated by Walker's Brook, the actual brook. Mm -hmm. Actually, I think the apartment buildings are currently listed as industrial. Are they? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so this, I believe these parcels are 
Those are residential, and that's a proposed 40B. Right. So it's that edge and and the edge down here, yeah. primarily. Yeah. I guess maybe entirely. What we're talking about. If you eliminate, if you no longer include the street as abutting residential, which is what you're doing here, then you're only looking at Ash Street and a little bit of Bolton. Say that again, Tony. If you are saying that if it, the industrial abuts a street, where the street is the dividing line between the industrial and the residential, mm -hmm. which you've eliminated from the transitional area, then you're basically looking at Ash Street and Bolton as residential, which abuts directly against industrial. Where's Bolton? It's where Rite Aid is. Rite Aid. Oh, yes. Yeah, Rite Aid number two. Yeah. <laughs> Soon to be Walgreens number 578. <laughs> they can't fill the space they already have. So. <coughs> um. as, as I say, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's complicated constraints that I'm not sure um, is worth the trouble. I mean, the, basically, def if we define the transitional areas and uh, made them subject to the appropriate review, it's much more site-specific than it is uh, legislative, if you will. I still want to have a little more direction than that. And I like the idea of the setback and how we control that height. I would at least have that in. And I would leave the general language we had just come up with for the buffer. Wait, can you say that again? Nick? Sorry, so what do you want to leave? I don't want to leave it wide open. Yeah. Because then we'll just get criticized for picking and choosing what we're allowing someone to do. Are you talking about 6413? The setbacks or are you talking about the buffering? Yeah, so in, in the... We, t we came up with a way for the setback to work with the building massing, which is 6413. Mm -hmm. Right. And then we had earlier, we had talked about how 6412, the buffers, would be less specific <coughs> and give more control to the site plan review. Okay. Yeah. We had some language in there about what they would be subject to. Subject to. Um, Buffers and screening, which include, which may include fencing, landscaping, <coughs> or other structures as deemed appropriate. That's separate from the landscaping piece. That's about plants and stuff. Nice <coughs> softscape stuff. Yeah, but that's I, that's where I would be. Public comments on this? Fred? <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, you covered mostly the setbacks from the industrial up against the residential. But on um, page four, the industrial districts is the part I'm interested in. Um, Note six. Let's 
six A, B, and C. What specifically about those? I'm sorry? What specifically about those? Uh, just the reduction. <coughs> it shows before, you know, you had was originally um, 50 feet, 30 feet, 30 feet. And it's a 26 and 8, 26 and 20 and 6. So the way I read that is setback could be as little as 0 feet from the property line. From, no, where it's, it's directly, so where you have a lot that's directly adjacent to other industrial right. lots, so like no streets in between. Correct. Right, so it's like you're a landlocked kind of situation. Exactly. Right. So if you are you have industrial lots that all congregate in one, say a corner, specifically, and someone wanted to put a structure there, it could be as little as zero feet. So as long as it meets these certain requirements. Yeah, right, right, of course. Right. I mean, you've got right, <coughs> fire protection, etc. Uh, fire apparatus, access, <coughs> accessibility, everything else. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're not going to put it, this isn't Havel, you're not going to put it six inches away from another building. Or things like that. Okay. The, can you explain why note six has the word accept? Um, wh where? Is it in the... Because it appears to say that yeah. you can be reduced to as little as zero feet, un you know, it, as long as it doesn't adjoin another industrial district. So it's, I think, because... I mean, maybe it's not necessary. Uh, it got carried over from more than this was... Was this written in the, uh, in the text before, in the body text? It was, yeah. So I think it maybe just came out. I think it there. still might be, I think. Oh, mom. Because I think it would have read, you know, 20 feet except where. Yeah, so the except probably that. isn't necessary. You don't need the except. Yeah. Well, I think the except has it a bit backwards if we include it. <laughs> yeah. So it's, it's like... 20 feet, and then you look at note six, and then it says where an industrial district lot is directly adjoining. Right. right. But don't need the word except. Yeah. 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 Ed, did you have a comment or a question? No, I, I'm just, I just want to get sure that's exactly how I read it. I mean, it's pretty, it seems pretty basic to me. Okay. Like you said, it's Industrial lot against industrial lot, or surrounded by industrial lot, placing a structure as low as zero feet on the lot line. As long as the conditions are met with the building inspector, etc. <coughs> and where is note seven reference? I was trying to find that same thing. Oh, did I mess up? Hold on. Two, three, one. Let me see. Oh, it's under hotel or motel, industrial districts, all the way over to the right. And then that reference is 6231, which is... Got it. Thank you. Let me make sure that reference is correct. 6231 is... It talks about the shadows. Yeah. Yeah. Potential language. What do we go from here? Do they go to a town meeting? Or? 
They go, I'm going to show you guys to do further review, et cetera, et cetera. We can do a further review at the next meeting if you want, um, or I can. Yeah, I think we should. We okay. need enough change. Right. Okay. Yeah, then you can review the way that I write your ideas. <laughs> um, and we're going to see it again with the corrected the, language. Right. Sure. Um, that'll be on the 12th, um, 12. February 12th. February 12th. And then it, yeah, then it um, goes to, to I believe it, it goes town to town council. council first, and then the board of selectmen put it on the warrant, right? We have to have it in final form by the time the warrant closes in the end of February. Right. And then it'll be at town meeting in April. Okay. <clears throat> and then does it still need to be approved by the state attorney general or somebody? Yes. And there's a 90, once the town clerk submits the paperwork from town meeting, there's a 90, the town, attorney general has 90 days to issue an opinion on the zoning change. So April, May, June, July. Yeah. So potentially 2018. I mean, if, yes, I mean, unless the year gets shorter. <laughs> <laughs> Right, I saw. We good on this? Do we want to vote? Uh, we're not voting, but we have corrected language. Okay, I see it again. On the 12th. Do we? Just because it's a public okay. hearing, do we need to do it? Give us a little bit. We continue this to the 12th? Yeah, we'll continue. yeah, and so I have. Um, Sorry, I'm going to go to the Seven thirty, open for that. Okay. okay. Move that the CBDC continue the public hearing for the zoning bylaw amendments for April 2, 18, 2018 town meeting until um, Monday, February twelfth yep. at seven thirty p.m. Second. All in favor. Okay. Request to continue the next item, which is a minor mod for Johnson Woods. Request from the applicant to continue to January 22nd, 2018. It seems like we did a successful job letting people know. So that's good. <laughs> <laughs> sure, we could both take in to uh, continue this until January 22nd, 2018. Mm -hmm. Oh, and time. That's 7.30. So, um... 7.45? No. Hold on. This agenda's huge. On the 12th. Let me just... Oh, yeah, I'm sick that day. <laughs> <laughs> um... just want to make sure I get this right. I have it... It could be 8.30. Mm -hmm. Okay. Move that the CBDC continue the, uh... Publication for, I'm sorry, the <laughs> no, minor amendment PUD special permit uh, hearing for Johnson Woods until uh, Monday, February 12th at 8.30 p.m. Second. All in favor? All opposed? All abstaining? All recused from anything doing with Johnson Woods? If you're recused, you don't have to be abstaining. I don't know what the rules are, so it's safer just to say no. <coughs> so that was four. Four zero. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so next up at eight thirty is continued public hearing for the forty R fourteen shaven app. And that's noticed, right? So we should wait till eight thirty. Mm -hmm. Perfectly, Julie. Almost. What's up with perfectos? Um, I think they're hoping to open next month. Really? Yeah. That's here. <clears throat> they have been visibly equipping the place, so. Mm -hmm. They have. And out of curiosity, the, uh, there's been some, shall we say, enhanced enforcement of Bagel World. Yeah. Yay! <laughs> I beat. I beat. I haven't noticed. 
if you're not. That's I, we come, I come down that way. Yeah. You know, you're only lightly not paying attention. You can get in trouble. Like just tiny seconds of being like, oh, oh, there's 16 cars in front of me. just looking at the calendar and discussing the zoning uh, for annual town meeting and I think what we'd like to do is um, send what we have to town council now because the warrant closes the Board of Selectmen will preview the warrant on February 13th and then the warrant closes on February 27th so I think it would be good for the next time we discuss it here have town council already have reviewed it we can get that okay. done and then whatever last changes we make and then everything's ready in have advance town council review the changes we just made we just yeah. made like i'll make them i don't know tomorrow or the next day and then we'll send them to town council because they have to be in the packet in advance of the february 27th meeting so that would be like february 24th or something so it gets a little tight in February. Yeah, the packet goes out on the 22nd. So if we're going to meet on the 19th, it has to be ready two days, three days later for the, the 22nd. The other way we could do it is we could get the updates from town council and just circulate them to the board and not have deliberation just say this is what we ended up with and if anyone has comments give them to Julie individually if there's nothing of any substance then we can just go <coughs> with it okay, so like not have them review it before the 12th but just what are you saying I'm Sorry. saying if, if we can get town council to review it circulate it back to the board in, in the draft town I'll call it town council draft so the board is reviewing the same draft that town council is reviewing but if we push this out to the 19th the 12th the 12th yeah that's why I was confused okay okay, okay. Um, I thought you said the 19th okay that's better okay so we're gonna meet on the, the 19th I think is a holiday actually so the 12th then we'll have a good solid week even with the holiday to make those final changes and get them into the packet for the board of selectmen so that works okay, okay. Yep. never mind <laughs> Perhaps we can discuss tomorrow night's um, board of selectmen meeting. What's going on tomorrow night again? Oh, yeah, so oh, right. tomorrow night there's three things of, well, there's probably more than three things of interest to you guys, but there are three planning related topics on the agenda. Um, there will be a presentation on the housing production plan um, renewal, which with our consultant. Um, which we've been working on since the fall, gearing it up to be renewed for certification this May, so that we stay certified um, with DHCD. There'll also be a presentation of our like kind of wayfinding um, design concepts, kind of where we ended up with our working group process by our consultant for that project, um, and then. There will be a discussion of downtown parking. So, next steps and strategies. 
where are we going to go with that effort? So I believe those topics start at 8.15. Yeah, we start um, 8.15, housing production plan, 8.45, wayfinding, and 9.15, downtown parking. And that's going to be a 30-minute discussion. Yeah. So each, I think each one of these runs about 30 minutes. <coughs> And then, so if a quorum of you are present tomorrow night and the housing production plan update is acceptable, it doesn't need a lot of changes based on your conversations and Board of Selectmen's conversations, um, then a vote could be taken. Although I just remember that. We could also just have you vote on February 12th. Did you notice this meeting tomorrow? No, I just realized I didn't have it. So. <coughs> So now we have a continued public hearing for the 40-yard plan review at 14 Chapin Ave. And we have some updated plans. Uh, Julie, do you want to say anything? Do you want to let them present their changes? I'll just let them present their changes since they're all here. Good evening, everybody. Um, Donnie Gary with the Sullivan Architects for the owner. Um, I guess I'll just run through um, major changes here and um, open up to any questions. So, um, as we left the last time, we had four units. Um, is where we left off last meeting. Um, the plans before you have been reduced down to three. Um, we had worked with Julie on getting a. Um, interpretation from the state on whether or not we could do that and uh, we were told if the density was still um, over the minimum then that would be okay so with the three units now our, our unit density goes down to 21 um, per acre down from 29 where it was previously at, at four units so the changes that that allowed us to make was a greatly reduced building um, while the length is similar to what the four unit building was, the, it allowed us to eliminate the tandem parking and provide side by side parking for each unit. So we still have two spaces per unit and they are now side by side instead of the, the tandem arrangement like before. Um, this also allowed us a, a wider driveway width, which is important because it not only improves the maneuverability greatly, um, it gets the building. Um, about 24 feet away from the, the side um, property line, which is about five feet more than it was previously. And then the last thing it does is it allows us to have two visitor spaces at the end of the driveway rather than the one. So now we have eight spaces for the project. Um, that puts us up at 2.67 uh, parking ratio for the project. Uh, like I mentioned before, the, um, the footprint has, has been greatly reduced by about seven feet. Um, in width, so that translates to about 1,800 square feet less of a building um, than previously submitted. So the FAR now for this project is 1.44. Um, and then, uh, Julie, if you can click into the the rest of the actually sorry, the, the rest of the, the site is still laid out similarly to how we've always had it, where the uh, driveway is towards the residential side, the building is towards the business side of the property. 
we um, were able to increase not only our driveway width, but also our width um, towards the business side of the property, getting back a better um, depth for some more private balcony uses on that side of the building. Um, and then the, the um, orientation of the building is still the same, where really the main building is facing onto the driveway side where the unit entries are, as well as the building. <coughs> so um, similar kind of building layout as before. Where do you want me to go now? I'm just going to go to the plan real quick. The architectural plans? Yeah. Okay. And just to kind of quickly go through the plans, they'll, they, they'll look very similar to what we had before, except for, as you can see now, we do have um, Side-by-side -side garage at the lowest level. Still have the foyer and entry, main entry to the units. Um, on the second level, the first uh, main residential level is more of your living space, kitchen, a half bath, dining. Um, and then the floors above that, Julie, you could um, take one up. Um, two bedrooms on the third level, and then um, a bonus loft space with a full bath still on the attic level. Um, So the, the other changes we made were to the, um, the building facade treatment. So instead of having um, a row of townhouses, we've now kind of broken up into a two-thirds, one-third look for the building, trying to mitigate the, the size of the building by giving it like a, a, a larger house addition kind of wing at the back feel to it in lieu of that repetitious um, townhouse arrangement. Um, we still um, don't have any dormers um, on the residential side of the property. So as you can kind of see in the diagram with the um, zoning design ratio, we're well off of what we're um, supposed to be. The dormers are on the business side where we're able uh, providing access up to that um, attic space bonus level. And um, the facades <coughs> are still treated with um, brick masonry on the Chapin Street and wrapped over to the front um, along the ground level, garage levels, and then um, a mix of fiber cement, um, lap siding, shingle siding, <coughs> and trim details um, for the sides and rear of the building. Um, on the back here, you can see where we have, we've reintroduced back those private uh, balconies for the two units on, towards the front, the front and the middle. And now the rear um, unit has a, a larger private balcony off the back facing into the, into the deep rear yard of the, of the uh, project. So those are the major changes that I wanted to highlight. I think it's an excellent alternative. Mr. Chairman, I have a question on how the height is being calculated in this building. Median, median point, mean point of the uh, slope? Of the lot or the perimeter of the building? Because it, by reading it right, it's starting at three and a half feet high. It starts from average grade. So of the lot or of the building? Of the lot. Yeah. I believe we're supposed to just go around the perimeter of the building. At least that's what I'm reading from the zoning uh, board. Zoning by lot. Average grade. Around the perimeter of the building. Around the perimeter of the building. Right. Is that what you did? I took it from average grade. I'll have to double check, but. I'll have to confirm that with this newer. You only got a foot to play with. Well, it's not even. Right. Right, we can adjust the. In this change, since we're narrower, we um, went back to a, a 10 pitch roof. We can, <coughs> we can change that back to a 9 and get ourselves back um, a foot plus in height there. We can make it. We can make it work. We could make it work, but you'll need to do the math and let well, us know what that is. Yeah. 
and it looks like you're measuring the midpoint of the roof, but you're not doing the midpoint of the dormers. Is that correct? Correct. <coughs> midpoint of the main roof. I don't think our definition says main or not main. I, I don't think it was ever included in the dormers. But wouldn't the, but wouldn't the dormers the make sense? <clears throat> I would say if it was a full shed dormer, we would probably want that number. If this were a series of dormers on this side, a series of smaller reverse dormers, I don't know that we would use those to measure. They don't stick up higher than the ridge of the roof, so. No, they do show move the <coughs> building significantly. That's the definition there. <coughs> Do you want me to read the definition from the bylaw? Do you already have it up? Oh, yeah. yeah. It's the, ver the height is measured as the vertical distance from the average grade around the perimeter of a building to the top of a flat roof, including any parapet, or to a point halfway between the bottom of an eave and the top of a ridge of a sloped roof. Doesn't so. include the dormers. Okay. Right, that's the... Right. <coughs> the dormers never going to be higher than the ridge. No, but the midpoint of the dormer will be higher than the midpoint of the roof. Yeah, but I think that that's the way I've always seen okay. it interpreted. Yeah. It's always about that that triangle, the main yeah. triangle of the roof, you know, because that gives you the most mass. <coughs> then it's on the main street side, so. Yeah, I was looking at the design standards to see how they apply to this. Most of the design standards are written for the four-story commercial buildings, you know. But I still think the intent is important. The intent of those design standards is to come up with something that's attractive, more attractive than we might get from a builder's standard set of plans. So you've done that on the east elevation, not so much on the west elevation, really. But it's the, it's the Chapin Street side that, that I'm staring at. I don't know why it's brick. There is this sort of functional rhythm to it, where the windows just ended up where, wherever they ended up at those rooms. Um, the door and the, like the door head and the window heads on the first floor don't have any, they don't, not at the same height, there's nothing that breaks up that brick. It doesn't address the street, whereas if you were doing townhouses and you had an end unit, that end unit usually gets some more amenities than the other middle units. But you can really address the street with this. There's no I think you had a porch at one point that wrapped around it. <coughs> we did. Yeah. And we lost that. So yeah. it, it's the side of a building. And I don't want to have to design this. <laughs> I know you can do this. Um, it looks like you have brick wrapping around the base of the garages, right? On the Correct. east side? Correct. Mm -hmm. And then maybe just a soldier course that's breaking up the east ele the south elevation. I'm just wondering if you could do more with that to make it address the street more so that it sort of fits into that residential feel. Um, I mean, you could, this, this entrance goes into a mechanical room, right? Yeah, it's sprinkler. It's not even really part of the unit. Yeah, it's sprinkler. <coughs> but I mean, the unit could have a front address. It could have a front porch. Is that porch you have in the back, by the way, is that end the unit going to dominate the portion of the backyard now? Is anyone else going to get to use it? Are they going to think it's theirs? Well, we were talking about leaving that as exclusive use for that unit, yes. Okay, so the end unit in the back gets a special amenity, although I think you're going to have to put the snow storage back there. Mm -hmm. You're going to need to leave those two spaces open. If they are going to be two guest spaces, and they need to be open at all times. So we'll have to push the snow up onto the grass there. I think we can do that. I don't, yeah. I don't think there's any reason why you can't do that. Yeah. <coughs> But I would really think about what do you want to do with this with this south elevation? Do you want any of the other materials on it? Do you just want the brick there? I think it would look kind of nice if you wrapped that the roof around potentially the low roof or gave it a porch or did something. Yeah, we had we had it last time. It didn't seem to wow you last time. I think because the door was just it wasn't really doing anything. Right. I don't know if you could do a different end unit. Here. I don't know. It could be worth a 
lot more. You know, if they had a street entrance, uh, that unit would be worth a lot more. Are you talking about the Bay Valerian Are you talking about a farmer's porch? Yeah. <coughs> I would run it right across. I think it would help scale the building down for sure, right? So you'd have this element. <coughs> well, for, I mean, this is your September plan. Correct. Which had the... Yeah. Yep. I would run that all the way across, though, because then it would, it would order your, your elevation. And it would give you the base just like you have everywhere else. It doesn't have to be very, very deep, I don't think, whatever space you have. It would be a nice amenity. <coughs> even if they, I guess even if they couldn't get to it from the inside, they could come out and sit on it. So it sort of engages the street. Okay. It makes them part of the neighborhood. Sure. Um, when we talked about parking last time, uh, when we were at four units, we were saying we wanted at least four parking, guest parking spaces. Is that what you said? No, we said two. We said two? Yeah, we said two, yeah. I mean, there's ways, depending on who's home, there's ways to get more than that. You could park a car in front of the garage doors if everyone's already there. Mm -hmm. So you could get cars off the street. Yeah, with this double wide width now. Yeah. yeah. I mean, those, those are the thoughts I had. I saw that the town engineer looked at the uh, drainage plan. And did he actually see calculations and everything as well? Yeah, the calcs are, I believe the calcs are on that, the actual sheet itself. Yeah. Okay. <coughs> <coughs> Other thoughts? I mean, there's still three bedroom units, by the way. What did you say? Mm -hmm. There's still three bedroom units. <laughs> Which is fine. We have a car here now. The thing that jumped out at me was this space between the, I guess, on what side is that? Um, on the. Uh, the on the west side of the building. So you've got six feet between the, um, the face of the building and the property line. So in that six feet, you've got both a, uh, well, you've got the stairs coming down and then presumably a walkway between the building and the stairs coming down. Is that a walkway you have to have? Um, because, right, I, the yeah. stairs are going to keep take up probably three and a half feet, so you're going to have a not much space there. <coughs> it's, it's not a walkway. Right. Um, so is that a space? Is that from a? I guess I was thinking more of a you know from a code perspective and. Um, an egress perspective, does that work? They can um, they come out. The, e the egress, the second means of egress for those two units are, is from that shared um, building there. And that's the shared stair down. This is so, egress from yeah. the units down. And these doors at the base could go, they could sneak past the stair, or they could go around to the north. <coughs> that yard to the last unit, you could redo the stair on that deck, by the way. Um, I would consider putting it either on the front or on the other side. That way, when you do the snow storage, you're not pushing it up against the stair. So figure out a different place to put that stair so that it's away from the parking snow area. Yeah. Do 
actually have room to push this more north? Um, that's my understanding, yes. You could move the whole thing more and more? Yes, we Just could go if another you, five. If you did the porch, you could then maintain the yeah. landscaping that you're showing on the street side. Yeah. That would be nicer. Peyton Manning would say, almost there. <laughs> resident of Butter. It's at 16 Chapin Avenue. Um, many of our concerned residents and neighborhood um, were unable to make it tonight due to illness, <coughs> deaths in the family, but I do have their concerns updated in the latest concerns letter. Um, <clears throat> I'll be as brief as possible. Okay. Um, so we do acknowledge some nice positive um, changes in the revised drawing. We do um, oppose the present construction of a four-level, three-townhouse structure due to the following concerns. Um, first of all, about the size. Um, we feel a structure smaller overall in size, lower in height, reduced to three floors and two units is a more appropriate fit for this small lot. The elimination of the fourth floor would help out on the parking. Um, as far as parking, um, we're concerned about the unaffordable number of six parking spaces and the limited um, visitor parking for 10 residents per unit in the living space. I don't see where you get 10 units per resident. Um, okay. Ten residents. So, um, in the bedrooms, like two beds per bedroom, so two on in the living space, so that's four. And then upstairs in the attic, there's a bonus room that can be divided into two more bedrooms, five, six, seven, eight. And the walk-in closet, I mean, people do crazy things. Oh, that's, that's in the closet. Uh, that closet's in the eave. It's not a. It's got an eave, so that wouldn't be allowed. Well, I mean, you wouldn't be able to stand up. I know. People do, you know, the worst case scenario. I, I, I think you're way over calculating there. I mean, I think if we were to consider then a three bedroom house on the street itself, a three bedroom house with a living room and a pull out couch and a basement and an attic, so you're saying that a, a house down the street has got 14 <coughs> people living in it? Well, these are rentals. Who knows what we're going to get or, you know, people are going to purchase these. Who knows what kind of, you know. No, who knows what kind of people. people you know. <coughs> what kind of people live on Chapin Street? Good looking people. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly. I don't, I don't think that's a, an appropriate characterization of the kind of people that are going to buy a $400,000 plus townhouse property. <clears throat> but six people for sure. It could hold six people. Uh, um, yeah. Okay. Two, 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 and yeah. Sure. Um, also, uh, with parking, um, we were concerned about the safety of the visitors when walking from the distantly located um, visitor parking spaces to to their destination. Um, where do the visitors walk? Do they walk down, down the driveway after they park in the visitor's spot? Um, 
thinking about people with a disability or elders or you know people carrying things they go into where do they go in do they go in the garage entry door and climb the stairs or do they go around to the um, back the front of the building climb the stairs get on the decks and go in just like the visitor and parking spaces are that way Sure, how they were going to walk to where they're going. <clears throat> um, the, as far as the driveway, the driveway width of 24 feet continues to leave some difficulty for the last unit backing out with the dual visitor parking snow storage area. If there's snow in that snow storage area. <clears throat> I, think we've agreed that, I think we've agreed that their scheduled snow storage will be moved over onto the grass so that, that those spaces are either, those spaces are always parking or open. So, okay, so. Their, their, their plan should indicate that the snow <clears throat> storage is in the grass area. Snow removal, so when it snows, how will <coughs> the snow be removed? So the visitor parking spaces <coughs> remain open. wondering what the plan was for the snow. Either the plow would back out from those spots and then lift it into the snow storage area by turning the vehicle, or those two spaces at the back would be shovel cleaned. So is the dual snow storage area parking? Is it a shared space? The two spaces in the back are shared spaces. It is a parking. With snow storage? No, or they the chairman suggested that the back knee area be afforded for snow storage. So that's a change from the plan that was presented, pushing the snow <coughs> over to the grass. Yeah. That way the spaces are always open mm -hmm. uh, in winter, both for maneuverability and for visitor access. Okay. <coughs> um, the, uh, we still have concerns about the absence of a um, drainage plan, no indication of the slope of the driveway to accommodate large amounts of snow melt runoff and stored snow. And also, the so the snow will be removed and not be kept in that snow storage area. So it'll be on the other side. Well, there was some concern about the snow spilling out onto the property next door. So. If we're going to push the snow over to the grass, that you know, takes care of that problem. It will be piling up into the snow storage area on the other side. Um, I um, appreciate the purchase of a bond by the building. Um, the, um, by the builder to cover any damage of the root system of the um, resident of Butters hemlock trees. Um, I would ask that the um, bond be in place for seven years, um, according to the arborist that maintains my trees in my yard. He recommends seven, year, seven growing seasons before a tree truly shows its damage. Um, do, we, do we have the ability to do that? Is that even possible? Excuse me? I'm trying to understand whether that's something we can actually uh, enforce. I understand your concern. I'd like to raise two points if I could. Sure. Uh, the applicant himself is an arborist. Uh, he's been to my house on a personal note. He's told me not to remove a tree because it still has a viability to it. He's very much aware and sensitive to vegetation and preserving it. Secondly, if the work that takes place on this site destroys or damages abutting trees, there's civil liability. And that's where it should rest. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to be sure of that because we've never done anything like that. <clears throat> um. And then the uh, special maintenance and care of the pervious driveway. Um, 
you know, in looking at the drainage report from August and the engineer's report, there's a lot of special considerations um, in order for the pervious driveway to work effectively. And, I'm, you know, we're, we're just concerned about who's overseeing this. Um, is, I think these some, um, is there going to be a property manager? And if, and whoever is the property manager, are they going to be knowledgeable and stay on top because of, you know, the only way that this driveway is going to work for the drainage and the building <coughs> is that if it's totally take, if it's taken care of the right way, there's so much, like the plow's not supposed to reach the pavement, has to be vacuumed and swept by it um, twice a year. And um, so there's a lot of care, maintenance in here. So um, Will Finch, who couldn't be present tonight, he, you know, he believes that he went over the full drainage report and the previous driveway and thinks it will work, but he, he said the devil is in the detail, that you have to make sure that all the care is followed for it to work effectively, and you know, that he's seen it not work when the town engineer hasn't really inspected it to specs. So he said I could quote him on that. So. In that area, it's not unusual for a decision to state that the condominium documents must contain within them the obligation of the trustees to maintain the civil removal, landscaping, things of that nature, uh, and that the, the town uh, planning director approves you know, that language within the document so that you're sure it's there uh, so that the trustees can do it. Of course, one of the concepts of a condominium is that you have a management that oversees it. You've got four people who have a stake and interest in this because it's, uh, it's not an apartment building. It's uh, going to be uh, uh, owned by four individuals or their families. So there's a, there's a, a reason to maintain it. It's not an absentee owner. Three. Three. Yeah. I'm sorry. Three. 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 I'm sorry. <laughs> 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 Just I hope that, you know, those details, so much care as far as kind of salt to use, how to plow. You have the same documents. You know, I just hope that language can go in, because that's very important. There's a condition on page 9 of the decision that relates exactly to that, um, which you might want to review and make sure includes all the language. That, like, I was just looking at that. <clears throat> Conditions for ongoing maintenance after occupancy. Like This is about the condo docs. Language that the property management company shall adhere to conditions for ongoing maintenance after occupancy, operations and manage, main, maintenance plan. Language that the property management company shall adhere to the submitted operations and maintenance plan for the porous pavement as specified by the town engineer in his 12.5.17 memo and stormwater water infiltration system which shall include language that the infiltration system shall be inspected on a semi-annual basis. Okay. <clears throat> um, we did have concerns about the dual snow storage and visitor parking, but we, um, we, we have cleared that up. Uh, the garages, onto the garages, um, there isn't a drainage system for the HVAC um, system for the expelled water. Like, where will that, we don't see any kind of a drainage of when, for the HVAC system in the garages. <coughs> Are you talking then, about condensate drains for the uh, air conditioning system? Is there usually condensation from the HVAC system and Where's the water go? Um, well, <laughs> it's not a commercial building. Yeah. Uh, it's not a laboratory where we're pumping, you know, you know tens of gallons per minute of, of condensate. Um, we're trying to, usually just a small drip of exterior con of uh, exterior line. I don't, I don't know what you're putting in for an HVAC system. Is it just going to be splits? Is it going to be yeah. one condenser? I think we're thinking splits. With um, <coughs> probably um, you know Tampa spoiler furnace, you know that condensate. I don't, I don't want to speak for the My understanding is about. is right on. It's not much. It's usually a trickle. It's not like a, a flow of water. 
uh, worse on humid days, you know, less on cold, dry days. <coughs> less of a through, through window unit. Yeah. I guess it would be like when you have your central air and it kind of slowly drips out of the pipe, like through the drain pipe. It's slow. Right. Less than Is your concern because you're seeing something on the plans that says uh, mechanical room and you don't see a floor drain? I just didn't see drainage. Yeah. From the HVAC system, it wasn't. I mean, everything has to be. These are not um, construction documents. These are sort of plan level documents. Uh, they'll have to come up with documents that the building inspector will approve and the plumbing inspector will approve. And so all of those mechanical systems have to be to code. Mm -hmm. And if they, if a, an equipment drain is required for some. <coughs> Drainage, then that they'll have to be required to put that in. You don't see any of the toilet drains either. You know, you don't see any of the lines coming down here. So that's something that's in the next step for them when they go to the building department, get a construction permit. Okay. Um, as noted in the revised draft plan from the other open hearings, um, there's not a photometric plan or information on light spillover. That needs to be added. <clears throat> Did we not do one before? Uh, we haven't done one. Um, you know, we're proposing just um, exterior recessed fixtures in the overhangs, you know, one over um, the entry and the garage door uh, that are down lights. So at least possible amount of light spillage. Mm -hmm. What about the, uh, the north yard? Is there going to be a spotlight on that? Um, perhaps a, um, a surface mounted uh, fixture next to the, the uh, deck door. I don't necessarily think we need to have a spotlight. <coughs> yeah, I mean, general, general zoning controls and basically no spill. Yeah, I mean there won't be any spillover from the recessed cans at the doors because they're going to go straight down and they're also 24 feet away and they're not very tall. I would say if you're going to put a spotlight, if there's going to be a light over the door, <coughs> you could do some sort of shielded um, fixture. So shielded fixtures for any lighting on the um, North elevation. Mm -hmm. okay. It's in the. It is in the. Um, <coughs> the decision. Um, you know, it's, it's <coughs> any light source being fully shielded with cutoff shields. Okay. So we've already. We have language in our decision that would require them to do that anyway. See the need for a photometric? There's, there's no proposed lighting above that first floor level, correct, on the exterior. Actually, not on the east side. So I would I would say we don't need it. I think we can intuit that it's not going to spill over. One more um, point in the garages. Um, the language bay for the um, shop, uh, that the parking garages should be used for parking only and not filled up with storage somehow. Well, I mean, it should be used just for parking, right? Can't do that. You can't. No, you can't. You do can't that. say that, but there's. A, it's likely that these people would use. Would use their garages for vehicles because they don't have the luxury of other places to park. Mm -hmm. Whereas people in residences, you know, would park out in their driveway and stay with their garages with stuff. Um, when we were talk so when we were talking about the driveway before, we were talking about there could be a couple of more spaces if the um, people parked. 
like the long resin the butter side. Is that what we were saying? Mm -hmm. So in, in front of the garage doors? I'm saying they yes. And there are already people in the garage. Yeah, there's there's room in the driveway for them to make accommodations when they are having guests. Since their cars, you could assume that their cars would be in the garage. If they only have one car, they've got an extra spot, but they could park a car in front of their garage since they're entertaining and not expecting to leave. And there'd still be room. There'd be room for the next car to go past it. It's 24 feet 24 wide, feet. which is the width of the aisle on a large parking lot when you've got parking on both sides. And 24 feet allows you to back out of any of those spots. So it's actually generous and you know, with some, with their <coughs> own management, they can main, they could put many cars on there. If they were having a condo party, they could fill the driveway up if they wanted to, you know, get everybody off the street. So there is that flexibility there. Now, I'm only saying these things because I'm, I'm trying to show you how I think about these projects. How would somebody actually use their building? Yeah, and from my side and our side, my first time, well, after first time going through this, so we ask questions. Yep, absolutely. Yeah, thank okay. you. But I mean, you, you've had, there's people on the street that have parties or entertain, and so the, the street's going to fill up with cars from one of the other houses, too. Um, you know, there's, you have to be courteous, and if somebody parks in front of your driveway, get them to move or have them towed. We have one side, you know, one side parking on Chapin. Um, there's going to be a um, garbage hauler. Uh, can there be, is there like any hours that they have to be restricted to? Because um, the residents are going to put their trash cans out in front of the garage on trash day, according to the um, plan. Um, <coughs> I know the businesses on Main Street their back faces our neighborhood. Sometimes they're emptying the garbage at five in the morning. It's luckily it's a little distant. But right beside us, our our, our neighborhood. Yeah. I mean Yeah, I'm no, when I was picking the train if there'd be the, some of the downtown businesses were getting their garbage removed way before they were allowed to. What are we doing for Can I devil's here? advocate on this one? Like, is there a reason why with three units a private hauler would be needed versus having individual condo owners bring it out to the street like residents? Um, I, I believe we were requested to do private by a town engineer, I think, um, during the DRT. Or someone might have brought that up. It might not have been me. <coughs> we might not have been the engineer, but I remember we ran into this same issue on what's the word? I forgot what street it is, but the converted organ um, Pierce Street. Pierce Street, yes. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we we ran into that same issue where there was a back and forth on for three. I forget how many. Was that three units? Four no, units. That was no, five. Five. Six or yeah. ten. Yeah. Uh, but I was but say there was nine. a whole discussion there about, <clears throat> you know, how does trash get taken out? Do you need, um, you know, because they're on different sides and they, that particular building is a little bit more conducive to, um, or, or less conducive to having one central um, trash uh, facility. And, and I thought you got some comments back from from um, it went as far as um, understanding what the, what the our contract was with the hauler and mm -hmm. contracted to take. Well, what is her, what is what is the town's position on that? Do they want them to haul it themselves? Or I'm looking to see if I can out? find that comment. There has been some recent litigation from condo associations suing towns. Say it again, sorry. Some some condo associations are suing towns because they want their garbage included in the tax rate. <coughs> I could have sworn the town of Reading several years mm -hmm. ago passed it that the condos would be covered for trash collection. I think you're right. Yeah, I think you're right too, Tony. 
What's at the end of summer across from the Sunoco? There's like two to three, four unit buildings, two next to each other. Leaning oak, leaning trees? No, no, they're large gray buildings, two of them large um, parking lot in between. And I'm saying this because I know that they have their trash out on the street, so it looks like they're condos. So their trash cans will be right in the garage. They can just drag them out, recycling, whatever. Mm. When this is 4 a.m. arrival. <coughs> I mean, and if, if they're know, part of the town's pickup, it would be picked up with the rest of the street. Right. If they're part of the rest of the town's pickup. Right. Right. No. My DRT notes don't indicate a preference from town staff. Okay. They indicate yeah. that you said you were going to do a private hauler. We could, yeah. Maybe so, I don't... So what we were prepared to, I think. Yeah. And then yeah. whatever yeah, no, decides to be it. Okay. Yeah, if, if your private hauler oh, happens yeah. to be the same company that does the town pickup, then much next. That'd be nice. Yeah. Well, how do we resolve this then? Well, I think what they need to do is the developer needs to provide um, a plan. And it's depending on <clears throat> if they can talk with the DPW uh, and or the a private hauler, just, kind of just provide um, an appropriate plan. Those three units, it would be basically no, <coughs> no extraordinary burden for the regular uh, town pickup. No, I agree. I just want to make sure that the town is on board with that. It would be six barrels, two barrels a unit, um, two uh, recycling bins per unit. One day a week. Yep. One day a week on the, on the um, sidewalk. Not necessarily. Not necessarily. At the end I of the driveway. I don't shape and have to Just put like the trash the not on the place. sidewalk. See what who, what gets picked up and what doesn't get picked up. But this is uh, a private hauler. Well, no, that's the question. Is, is it or not? <clears throat> I, I guess whether it's a private hauler or not a private hauler, I think the trash situation for three units is uh, is similar at uh, similar to any other residential three units in town. We have them all over the place that are sort of as, as I'm going to say, as dense a street with as much trash pickup along the street as you have on Chapin Ave. So I don't think that that perspective is, is anything different. I think what we need to resolve or what the applicant needs to resolve is whether this is something that the um, the town would be picking up and from a from a neighborhood perspective I, I would think that would be better because you're you're gonna have the same the trash trucks gonna come at 5 a.m. once and not two two different times down the street so or whatever time they come down shape it out it would seem that if the town's policy would be to pick up trash in these circumstances, then why doesn't that work? If the town's policy is not to accept it under these circumstances, require a point of hauler, why wouldn't that work? So, I mean, the town's community can tell us what we have to do. Right. And so there will be sidewalks. So at least there'll be space, because right now it's, you know, no sidewalks. But there's going to be sidewalks. I mean, a paved sidewalk, a hard, hard sidewalk. Just to finish this off, I know that on the corner of Green and Elliott, right around the corner, there is a four-unit uh, condo that the trash gets picked up. By the town? By the town. They have two garages on, on each side. Yeah. Mm -hmm. well, how do we want to word that? Uh, I guess when we get to that one. Talk about it. Give them the option to do either. 
from you wanting to close this out tonight? Well, I want to give them direction, though. Well, if, if you don't close it out tonight, they can check and see what the town wants. Okay. Right. Uh, I, mean, I think, we, I think we've, we've come up with enough comments and or concerns that they will need to come back one more time. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, just have a couple more things. Yeah. Thank you. Um, the construction, we're concerned about where the construction vehicles will be parking when <coughs> construction is taking place. Um, Ordway Terrace is a private way. Um, they'll have to limit, like, and not go overboard with all the trucks and kind of be frugal about. Yeah, we require them to have a meeting before they pull a permit. I'm just trying to see how we want this. Pre construction meeting is held on projects like this so that long before they even get a building permit, we've worked that out. Oh, thank we'll you. Have to tell them, they'll have to tell the town where they're going to park their vehicles. It'll likely be on site once they get <coughs> the pole dug up, anyways. At some point, they'll be able to park on site. Um, last but not least, the fencing. Um, <coughs> last time, Mr. Sipping and you recommended I go up to Calarusso's and look at their vinyl wood light finish. And I, you know, went with an open mind. Mm -hmm. I went over, I touched it, I, you know, I looked at it, tried to stay open, flexible. If it works, I would, you know. But I still think it looks very, very artificial, the coloring. And in talking to neighbors and friends, and everybody reports that they do split and break very easily. There is um, a wood fence that Mr. Polanski put up uh, 30 years ago on my side. It's still standing. It's still in good condition. And then one other thing about the fencing, there's nothing in the plan if there's going to be any fencing along the rear of the property. I don't think that was an over, oversight. Or... You mean along the north, the short line? Yes. Donnie, what do you got? Do we have on the back line? We don't have anything right now. Right. <coughs> What's the lot next door? It says here Federal National Mortgage Association. Mm -hmm. That's just the owner. Right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Is it? Mm -hmm. The back of the residence? Mm -hmm. We'll leave it to the family. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Is that a butter here? Mm -hmm. No. Uh, no. That, um, that house, is, that two family has just been mm -hmm. um, sold. Okay. And um, they're in the process of renovating it. Well, we we always let the um, butter and the, and the developers work out fence lines if they want a particular type of fence and if they're willing to, to give you what it is if you want a wooden fence. And if you have no objection to, to providing with what she's asking for, that's fine. Um, uh, you might want to reach out to that back of butter and see if they want a fence just so that you don't put something up <coughs> and they're complaining about it, I guess. Sure. Or, or not put one up if they're okay with that as well. Yeah. They do step <coughs> up there. The, 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 um, the grade really starts to like, jump up mm -hmm. back there, so. But we can ask, yeah. So sure. sure. Not everybody wants a fence between properties. Sometimes yeah. they want to see their neighbors. So a lot of thought has gone into this process and this plan, and um, we, we appreciate it very much. <coughs> However, it's very worrisome and questionable how enforceable a lot of the language is. If things aren't followed, who do you go to? I did read in the um, in the draft plan that if things get out of hand, you, and, you know, a lot of complaints to the police or to the Board of Selectmen, things will get looked at. You mean, you mean uh, complaints with neighbors? Noise and things yeah, like, like that? Yeah, like, like, um, like if we had a problem with parking, like who do you go to, you know, who's, is this, all these uh, great thoughts enforceable? It's just, 
you know, worrisome. So there's certain things in the decision that are under your purview, which I put in condition number one, under general. It's, it, and it relates to that um, threshold that triggers like a site plan review. So if a site results in um, traffic spillover, excessive noise, unreasonable site illumination, things like that, um, we have the ability to require them to come back. Um, but that would be, you know, an excessive amount of complaints to police and staff and like a real legit, mm -hmm. if they start, if they put floodlights like on the building. Um, or, you know, there's some, they're not managing their parking at all. Um, and it's like cars sticking out onto Chapin Avenue. Stuff like that. So, in essence, the, <coughs> this project has more control, more control over it than your single family, or, well, your mm -hmm. residence, which if you had a floodlight facing your neighbor across the street, you mm -hmm. can only complain to you about it. Or throw rocks at it. Okay, anything else on this? Any other, do you have anything else? Yes, sir. Ken Charest, 17 Elliott Street. I'm having a little trouble understanding. First off, we have, the plan is snow storage and not snow removal. That is understand and use the end of the driveway to store the snow. So if, if, the, if the snow is stored on site, that's where it will go. Snow will be on site. I mean, if it's three inches, of course it will. If it's 15 inches, it'll probably be removed. It'll have to be removed, okay. I mean, it's, oh. it's yeah. I just wanted to understand that. Sure. Because it seems to me with the two cars at the end of the driveway, the incentive is to plow them in to clear the two three, uh, four, three garage doors, and then have to plow it back out. And uh, I see an incentive to drive the snow back out to the street. Well, they, they couldn't bring it out to the street. Well, I, no they, I understand, but there's, there's, a, there's, a, there's, a, there's an incentive there to clear those two cars at the end to drag it out to the street. Uh, I think they would so push it off. They're going to create that condition. Push it to the green. Yeah. Want them to push it up onto that green space there. See that up there? Well, if a car is parked there, how, how is it going to get to the green space? But those are <coughs> shoveled by hand or a snowblower. Or the visitor's going to have to move before the plow. Yeah, I mean, don't yeah. have to manage their car. You can't parking. plow it because there's a car there and there's only about four foot to the corner of the building. They'll have to manage that. Yes, sir. Uh, Ken Muse, 28 Chapin Avenue. If you put three licensed adults in each of those units, that's potentially nine vehicles. You have eight parking spaces. <coughs> no place for visitors. They, they, they'll come out onto Chapman Ave. They can go to the, the, the police department, get the little tag, stick it on their, uh, their mirror, in park on Chapin Ave. What are the, what are the uh, parking regs on Chapin? If you're yeah. a resident, you can yes. Yeah. Along with most of the employees from uh, Mission of Deeds, all of the employees from um, the Chronicle, who, by the way, have a free parking space there. They don't have to get anything on theirs, but they line that side of the street, which is potentially the sidewalk. So I'm assuming that the condo docks will be the two garage spaces to your unit, but no other spaces. But they won't be, <coughs> they won't be allowed to permanently park a vehicle in the driveway. Yeah. Okay. There'll probably be language in the docks that says visitor spaces are for visitors only. Yeah. It's pretty typical. Which means if you buy, just like any house that anyone moves into or buys, <coughs> if you buy a, a space, you buy the house and you, um, you have to manage with two cars or you need to find someplace else to park it and, and that's going to be purchasing <coughs> a spot because in Reading you can't park on the spot, uh, park on the street during the, the winter. So. Um, so it's, I guess that situation isn't different than 
really almost any other residential property in town. You have to live within your parking needs. And, and in this case, it's, it's a little bit better in that, you know, instead of up by, you know, Wood End where you can't function without a car, here there's a good chance where, you know, you're within walking distance of, of the train or, or the bus. And so, um, you know, if there are three adults, you know, that they can get by with, with two cars. Sorry, what's the tag again? The tag is a visitor parking or it's a resident parking? Resident. To park on the street? During the yeah. you have to be a resident of Chase and Avenue. Chase and Avenue. Okay. Well, you can you can if you're not a resident, like <coughs> say um, say the uh, uh, mission of needs. I think it's two hundred and fifty dollars to the town to get the ticket, so that you can park. The signs say two hour parking. Very rarely is that enforced by anybody. But if you have that little sticker, you can. That's that's mm -hmm. waived. You can park there all day long, okay. and they do. Tomorrow night. I have I have two vehicles. Yeah. I can't park in front of my house. <clears throat> well, one of the I have to put them in my driveway. One, one time I had three vehicles on the lawn. all in the driveway. Yeah. 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 Tomorrow night, seven thirty, the board of selectmen are having a discussion on downtown parking. Sounds like you might want to be there. <clears throat> The issue is just congestion. I understand. You're really, you're really creating a more congestion, more congestion in that area. It's already tight uh, as a normal function. That's the concern and the safety element of that. Sometimes mm -hmm. when there's snow, um, the other day we had a fire <coughs> in one of the houses on Chapin. And the two fire trucks came, and only one had to stay. And the second fire truck had to back up, up Chapin, in order to get out of the neighborhood. That's why they have red lights on the fire engines. <coughs> um, so, will there be a property manager? Probably yes. That's going to be a decision by the condominium unit owners in the long term. It'll be, some will be put in the plan that there has to be one. Well, the, the law doesn't require it. it doesn't require uh, usually, if you have four or more, this is annual three, but normally four or more, you do have management. If it's smaller than that, like a duplex, many times they don't have it. So I think the intention would be probably initially to have it, but after it's sold, the owners will decide how they want to manage their own property. So what would happen is that <clears throat> condo owners would get together and hire the plow guy, the landscaper, <clears throat> or if need be, the trash person. So, and they would be the ones responsible for taking care of it. Everything is still going to get taken mm -hmm. care of. It's just a question of whether you have somebody actively managing it or three people getting together and saying, yep, hiring somebody and say, okay, you take care of this, you take care of that. Mm -hmm. Are they going to care about the driveway, though? Like, <coughs> like the, the needs of that. It, it's so special. Back when the, they hire like the, the tanks. More than likely, they'll hire a landscaper who will be responsible for both plowing and landscaping of the property. That She's way, talking about the pavement. Right. And that would be the, the landscaper slash plower would be responsible for taking care of it. They would have to hire somebody who is capable of doing that. Did you do pervious at the um, school on summer? Did you do pervious for their parking, for their <coughs> spots? I think... You know, that's sort of on the scale of this. Oh, you mean, the cri other, you mean criteria? criteria yeah. I thought they did pervious on the uh, They did along space. some of it. Yeah. Right. yeah. Not the main drive, but the back, space. Back, yeah. in the back, yeah, they yeah, yeah, that's right. So that's the scale of this. Yes, yeah. That's the scale of this sort of impervious system here, too. It's not the only one in town. It's not the only one around. Why three units in there? Why not two? I don't think two would pass the. Probably not. The it would be under the twenty unit per acre minimum. About twenty-one. 
They wouldn't be allowed to take advantage of this zoning with less units. They're actually going to have to request <coughs> special permission to get the three units. Right. Can I ask the board to yeah. waive the four unit requirement? It's a, it's a waiver, yeah, of the four unit requirement and a waiver of the density. And, like and so if it went down to two, they wouldn't be able to do, do it. And the only thing right. they could really do with this <coughs> property besides keep it in the existing, with the existing use, the existing building is, is build um, commercial, right? So that's that's the option for redevelopment of this site is either commercial or uh, um, three unit um, residential. And then why so high? I know it's within the standard. I do know that. So um, high. It's not that high. Thirty two feet, thirty three feet, which is the max we allow for residential only thirty three feet. <laughs> And 35 is what we allow in normal residential districts. And you're on you're A40, actually, which I was surprised by. If there was anything I would do as a neighborhood, I would petition to have that change. The A40 is so weird for that, the, the history of that neighborhood, the small nature of those houses. It seems like it wants to be something other than A40. If you look at the A40 zone, it kind of like shoots down in there. It's weird how it's wedged it's in there. Weird it's, like very it's well before our time, but I'm just saying it's an odd zoning. Thank you. Which, which, <coughs> which means, um, you know, uh, um, by right, someone could come in and build, um, and it's not about this, but within that neighborhood, something that's, um, um, even more unkeeping with what what was built there before, because um, that's a pretty <coughs> dense um, zoning um, um, district. Yeah, A40 Apartment allows zone. A40 allows for a lot to happen. Do you have the year when that was changed? It might be it's probably time. been changed like incrementally many <coughs> times over the years. It would be my guess. Do you mean when it was adopted by the town? The A40, that particular area. Oh, it certainly hasn't been expanded by us. Oh. And the yeah. time that I've been around this board, which is a little over 10 years or so, and what? attention to it, I haven't seen anything about that. I'm going to guess it's probably, I'm looking at the zoning bylaw right now at the end. Um, I'm going to guess it was in the 70s, S10 to A80 in map 6. When was Washington Arms built? I think in the 70s. So A40 is this blue. <coughs> Yeah, it's really strange. Um. There's a recodification in 78. It's possible it was then. That's what I'm thinking. Revision of apartment regulations in 69. And I don't know why, but I'm under the impression that the goal was to actually start con consolidating many of the lots because they were so tiny. <coughs> Normally, uh, usually we look for S15, and these lots are nowhere near 15,000 square feet. I think the goal was to com start combining them, have people take multiple lots together, and then put up multifamily housing. Sounds very 70s-ish. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, it's basically, on November 78 was when we changed from S10 to A80 in one of the the map area. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, so are there any other comments? Mm -hmm. okay. I, just, I just have an understanding. This waiver to go from four to three. Okay. Could you ask for a waiver to go four to two? No, so four to three is allowed by the Department of Housing and Community Development's legal department because three units still exceeds their minimum requirement of 20 units per acre. 
So anything less than that would not exceed their permit. So we're only allowed to do what the um, Commonwealth allows us to do, and so they don't allow us to go under 20 units per acre. Um, and so that's for yeah for the smart growth for the smart growth district, correct? So cool. <clears throat> If there's nothing else, I think you have some direction for minor pieces. Don't say the 22nd. Today's the 22nd. So, you guys, the 12th is the next meeting. Okay. Today is the 22nd. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and you said the, um, the 12th is already heavily booked? Yeah. Oh. Yes, it, it is. Um, there's things that I know that are coming that I don't have yet. So this takes priority over those. Um, so this could happen at 9. On the 9th, the 12th? Mm -hmm. okay. Move that the CBDC continue the public hearing for the 40 uh, r plan at 14 Chapin Avenue until Monday, uh, February 12th at 9 p.m. Second. Okay. All in favor? Thank you for your time. I appreciate it. Thanks. Continue the public hearing for the 40 hour plan review at 467 Main Street, the former Sonoco station, until Monday, February 12th at 8 p.m. Second. All in favor? Did you hear from them? I mean, they were so hot on being on tonight's agenda. No, they wanted to just make sure they could hold the spot until they could work it out with the seller. Yeah, so I, so I did hear from them. So they were surprised that they wanted it to be that the scheme that we worked out. Oh, um, um, Jill, is that someone's? Jill, hat. There's a hat and a coffee oh. mug. Thank you. Well, now you're back. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm back. Good night. Thank right. you. Have a good one. Okay. What else do you have for planning updates and for other topics? Besides all the things we're going to talk about tomorrow, <laughs> yeah. the yeah. board of selectmen. 7:30 is parking. Uh, no. 8:15. Uh, 815 We start with housing production plan. 8:45 is wayfinding, and 9:15 is parking. Okay. If I don't make it, I still like my idea of not allowing. 40B and 40R projects to get parking tags if they don't provide enough parking for everything they need and, and or don't find a shared parking arrangement. Right? We have we have no leverage sometimes with these people. They, they say that they'll do something, but they don't. Um, 
So they shouldn't be allowed to get stickers, they residential stickers. They should get stickers for their residents if they can't show that they've provided enough parking on site and or found a lot somewhere that they're going to be able to rent and put their overflow mm -hmm. or their visitor parking. That's a good point. Residents are not eligible. Their residents would yeah. not be eligible. That address would not be eligible to mm -hmm. get a parking pass at the depot or downtown or something else. Yeah, they cannot impact the at all. Right. Yeah. Because we're, we're starting to get a lot of projects down there now. We're starting to get the activity everybody wanted. Um, you know, we can't keep waving, you know, one spot here, one spot there, keep waving something and then expect it to sort of sustain itself. So far for the 40R projects, you haven't waived the 1.25 requirement. No, but the 1.25 is, you know, is the number we think is going to work. There's right. still visitor parking and right. there's, there's other traffic deliveries and other things like that that happen. But so, like, how do you draw the line? Like, if they meet 1.25 but provide no visitor spaces, are they allowed to have resident stickers or, or not? I mean, it's going to be on a very ad hoc, I feel like. You have to be fair about it, but right. I think you can look at a project and say, this project, there's no way this project is ever going to um, support the, the use that they have. So if we finally got a stupid project that had a first floor with commercial on it, for example, you know, we would keep getting these little pieces of the building. But if we got like a 30 Haven where the whole first floor is commercial like it's supposed to be, and I know that's exempt, right? That's exempt, but right. we know how it's going to be used. So those spaces in front of that commercial shouldn't be for visitors for the residences. We should understand that at least during the day, yeah. those are all going to be detail. used, you know, in short terms for the yeah. commercial. Right. So a project that has no visitor spaces and says, oh, we're just going to use these ones in front, yeah. that's defeating the purpose. It's not supporting the commercial spaces, as you keep mentioning, you know, yeah. you want to be able to pull in and use that space okay. and look at it. Okay. Yes. Okay. Not fully formed. It's just I like get I what you're saying. I'm just thinking of broadly. Like it makes sense, but how you get how you, how you get there, and it. how we enforce this, and how we get the word out, yeah. and how the police know. Well, you have to show your address. Stuff, you have to you show know. your address when you go to the and and, and, the, and the person there who's issuing them will have to know. Oh, people at this pro project don't get it for this reason or whatever. Yeah, there'll be a list. So right. So that's a list we'll have to make, and and that's the thing. I'm just trying to like, you know. I think enforcing it is easier because it's the distribution of the tag that's the right that's what point. i'm um, right how we get to how it, it's enforced how we get to the, the, the final well, factors um, and we have the additional issue that the uh, other than the depot part it's the the compost area and Resident parking sticker is, is one sticker. Mm -hmm. I thought they no, split not it. anymore. They split it anymore. They split it. Yeah, okay. they raised yeah, the depot. You can get a compost only sticker. And they increased the price of oh. parking at the depot. How yeah. much is the compost? And I still don't, compost I'm still is still not 25, sure. I think. I'm, I'm not sure which spaces at the depot or the depot sticker. The people that park here. It says resident <laughs> parking. <laughs> you either get a. a Resident the sticker table. for the depot <laughs> also includes compost, or you get a compost, maybe even just tag that you can use when you come in. So well, you get a but a resident sticker lets me park in a resident spot, but it doesn't let me park at the at some subset, which are the ones no, right. closest to the depot. Right. There are some well, there's a bunch of them. Uh, 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 oh, the MTA parking. There's right? employee parking. There's a. Uh, there are different colored stickers. They let you park in the other neighborhoods, but at the depot on those spaces in front of the tracks there. Yeah. Well, but there's, there's four the different signs. There's leased parking only. There's, I mean, there's and there's resident parking only, and, and there's at least three different signs. I've only seen two yeah. at the depot. And I mean, and the, the signs two there are. Yeah, two times you need to park at the signs. depot to yeah. take Do a bike. Side. Yeah. Unfortunately, it's not really right. where. Yeah. Like, oh. all right. You have two square feet yeah. of sign. Uh, for if there's any place outside MTA, all like, different oh. heights. I, was say, I think yeah. it's only like it the like MTA like spots. Signs and everything else everywhere. Is in the middle everywhere. of the There's night, certain spots that the MTA leases 
and rents I mean you get an empty yeah. like people can't figure out like anywhere else and I do believe that the sticker for an employee should be the same okay drive through downtown Concord and then we'll but talk I don't about know totally messed up parking like as in the same zone so I'm not entirely sure on that well I mean it's I had to run into the state house to go to, to uh, public hearings, and I was trying to find a pl figure out which parking place to I could take, yeah. and it was f anything but clear. <laughs> no problem. Anything else? Move to adjourn. Second. All in favor.